Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar about the graphs in retail and how to drive digital transformation using Neo4j. Uh, my name is Alessandro Svensson and uh, I work uh, as a solutions marketing manager at Neo Technology. This is today's agenda. Uh, we're going to start off with a very quick intro to graphs uh, and then move on to talk about the graphs in retail and I have, I have two uh, specific uh, examples that I want to show you, one regarding real -time recommendations in retail and another one concerning delivery and logistics uh, and then we'll do a quick sum up uh, and that's it for today. So let's start off with a quick, just a quick definition uh, of what graphs are and how they work. Uh, and when we talk about graphs, we actually talk about a way of representing data. And uh, this could either be done uh, by representing data in a table, as you would do in a relational database, uh, which is good when you work on projects that are very structured, that are uh, allowed to be pre-computed, uh, and where the premises doesn't change much. Uh, a graph, on the other hand, uh, is data that is represented in a way that the data is naturally relates to each other. And this is how it's, it's stored in a graph database. And graph databases are useful for projects that require high flexibility when you need to query your data in real time and when the engagement sessions are highly contextual. And uh, Neo4j, of course, is the world's first off-the-shelf graph database that it's designed to derive value from all these data relationships. And uh, at NEO, today we find graph projects in virtually every industry, every, everywhere from finance to social networks, uh, logistics, HR and recruiting, healthcare, uh, manufacturing, telco, and uh, today's subject, which is uh, retail. So let's look a little bit at, uh, at retail. Uh, Neo4j, Neo4j solves retail-related challenges for some of the largest companies uh, in the world today. Uh, for example, eBay tackles e-commerce, uh, their e-commerce delivery service routing uh, challenges with Neo4j. Uh, Walmart uses Neo4j to provide its customer with relevant and personal recommendations. And Adidas is using Neo4j to combine content and product data to create a, a personalized customer experience. Uh, and in this webinar, I'm going to walk you through two examples of how you could benefit from using graphs in retail. And, and we're going to begin with perhaps the most, uh, the most common use case, which is real-time recommendations. But first, let's talk a little bit about how retail is changing. Uh, if we consider the traditional retail value chain, we go from a, basically a component manufacturers through assembly plants through wholesalers and retailers, and until the product actually reaches the end consumer, it's a very linear structure, right? The online retail value chain, however, has to put the customer experience in the center. Uh, and the fact is that the customer experience in retail is anything but linear. It's very much a matter of connections. Because if you consider everything from your sales channels to your supply chain, uh, your inventory, your marketing efforts, your CRM systems, and of course your payments, all of these things will affect uh, customer experience. And uh, this is how. For example, in sales you will have multiple sales channels. Customers will shop through web pages, through their mobile, uh, and of course the physical stores. Your supply chain in terms of inventory, shipping, and delivery will have enormous impact on customer experience. Uh, of course, needless to say, your products and prices uh, impact customer experience. Your marketing programs in terms of content marketing and uh, promotions and coupons, etc., will have impact on customer experience. Uh, your CRM work in terms of how you handle customer returns, complaints, is very important to customer experience as well as your loyalty program. Etc. Uh, and obviously, your payment methods will play a big role in customer experience, uh, how easy and fast it is to pay, for example. 
Uh, so what we see here is not a linear value chain, it's actually a highly connected value chain uh, where the epicenter is the customer experience. And this will only go even further when we think about beyond mobile, when we start connecting smart products, uh, augmented reality, and connected homes, etc. So the job for the retailer today, uh, the transformation is that it requires uh, retailers today to put all this data into good use. Uh, so if you look at one example how this could be done using graphs, uh, one of the most obvious areas in retail, of course, is the, the shopping experience, uh, which is more and more shifting from being a physical store experience to being a mobile experience. And when it, shop, when it comes to shopping online, probably the most important feature is the product recommendations that you make because they will have a direct impact for your sales. Uh, and of course, we all know that Amazon kind of set the standard for how online recommendations work. Uh, and in this example, we see a user is looking to buy a KitchenAid. And normally you would see recommendations based on like related products or something like people who bought product X also bought the product Y, etc. Uh, and this would be a very classical retail recommendation, which is also very easy to model the graphs. Uh, and thus, this will be this kind of scenario uh, modeled as a graph, right? The question here, though, is if this is a limited way of looking at recommendations, because you risk leaving out a lot of information about your user that actually affects what a good recommendation could be. So, for example, it wouldn't make any sense, right, to recommend a product to a user that you know that he or she has made a complaint about. Uh, and this is information that you have in your CRM data. Uh, it wouldn't make any sense to recommend a product to a customer that has already bought and returned a product. That would also be just a bad recommendation. It wouldn't make any sense to recommend a product that you know that you don't have on stock, for example. Uh, and say that this is a Christmas present, it wouldn't even, it wouldn't make no sense to be recommending a product that you know that you can't deliver on time. Uh, and this is information that you have because your logistics data will tell you this. And lastly, this person uh, looking at a KitchenAid could actually be an anomaly. It doesn't necessarily mean that this particular user is interested in kitchen stuff at all. Uh, and your payment and purchase data will tell you this. Perhaps this person's pattern tells you that what you should actually recommend is uh, surfing equipment or uh, smart TVs. I think the, the important thing to remember is that the more you know about your consumer, the more relevant your recommendations will be and the better the chances that you'll actually be able to make a sale. And of course, this is a numbers game. And once you start doing this at scale, this of course could have significant impact on your revenues. Uh, and this is something that you could achieve uh, uh, using graphs. So what we're starting to see here is, is basically a technology shift going on. Uh, and the fact is that you can't really solve graph problems efficiently with a non-graph technology. So in the retail example I just showed, this would only work if the data we're working with was stored as a graph. The fact, though, is that a lot of traditional companies, especially in, um, in retail, uh, have a technical legacy uh, that structures data in a way to perform a specific task. So in the retail example, this would probably look something like this. Uh, you will have systems in place uh, to perform different functions. For example, your inventory will be handled uh, by, a, uh, by a specific system. Your CRM data will be, uh, will be run on, a, uh, on another system. So your payment data, your marketing efforts, etc., uh, your logistics data, and so on, will be, uh, will be run on systems that are not designed to re relate to each other. So in order to put the data from all these systems to good use effectively, you need to add a graph database layer. Uh, because if you try to solve these kind of challenges um, based on a foundation uh, that doesn't handle connections naturally, it will be extremely difficult and it would require so much time and money uh, if you get it to work at all. Uh, 
that it's virtually impossible to justify. Uh, because this is a lot of data, a lot of connections, and relational database systems will basically just crumble. Uh, and the reason for this is that in order for a relational database to operate effic effic efficiently, uh, it requires that it's pre-computed, that the purpose is predetermined, uh, and the context is uh, limited, and that the data structure don't change that much. Uh, a graph database don't really have that penalty. Uh, graph databases thrive when making queries in real time, uh, when data is dynamic, when the environment is highly contextual, and when, and when you and when you require flexibility and scalability, as you would in a recommendations uh, example for retail. So, to put it simple, uh, to solve graph challenges in, uh, from a data set that is highly interconnected and to do this in real time, you actually need a graph database. Uh, and another example I want to share with you today is a uh, logistics example or a delivery example, uh, which is of course extremely important in retail. And if you look at what's happening in retail today, we see a huge shift in user experience. That is, and the most dramatic shift of course is the shift from a physical store experience to uh, an online and a mobile experience, right? Uh, and this isn't necessarily always an improvement, though, in, phys in, in user experience, because in the physical store, you would have instant access, for example. Uh, and sometimes, if it's closed, for example, it's actually a good thing if you can have a physical experience with the, with the, uh, with the actual product. The downside, if, of course, is that it requires visits, uh, and uh, a physical store would have a limited inventory uh, um, at, at a certain uh, point of time uh, during a certain visit. Uh, the online logic is 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 kind of the the opposite, right? That uh, you don't have uh, the the, pur the purchases, of course, can be remote, uh, and in theory, you would actually have an unlimited uh, inventory because you can kind of shop from uh, from from the main main stock. Uh, the downside is, of course. Uh, that a lot of uh, retailers struggle with is the delivery times and fees, uh, and sometimes that you don't have that kind of non-physical experience, which is uh, always uh, which which could actually be a, a real downside. Uh, and one thing that would improve the especially the online experience would be same-day delivery. This is something that all retailers today uh, struggle with, and um, need to come up with business models and, and systems that can actually uh, achieve this. Uh, so I want to share with you something that we call it. Uh, it's very simple, but it's we call it the same day delivery demo that, that we created uh, together with our uh, field engineers here at NAO. And uh, this is the premises for this. Imagine that we have a store for a big commodity retailer, for example. Uh, and of course, the store's location will be based on easy access to as many customers uh, as possible, right? That's, uh, that's just how, how this logic works. Uh, but this also means, using the same logic, that this particular store is actually located in a place where it's theoretically easy to deliver products to the same customers, right? Uh, so let's take this map. This is a map of Stockholm uh, in Sweden, and the red dots could be the presumptuous, presumptuous locations of uh, a commodity retail chain, right? And the dots in the center here uh, are, uh, the dots in the middle are located close to each other uh, in the center of Stockholm, uh, and the others are located outside the city. So let's say that the retailer has the theoretical ability to deliver products in the center within two to four hours. And for the areas outside the city, they can make a delivery sometimes during the day. And so in this demo, let's see how this will look if we load a particular retailer's data into Neo4j. Uh, so first, we will model this by start off with a particular store location. And uh, this store, of course, has an inventory uh, and that could be uh, T-shirts uh, that belong to the category summer clothes. Uh, we also know that this store, of course, is located in a certain zip code. 
And surrounding this this information, uh, we know that we uh, in this particular zip code, uh, the couriers that we use that we contract uh, are a car delivery service and a bike delivery service, and we know that they have they are available during certain time slots. Uh, and this is basically all the data we need to run queries in real time to build application to make a scenario like this possible. Uh, and all of a sudden, we see how this could start to impact hands-on customer experience in very significant ways. Uh, so expanding on our recommendations example from before, we could also start to add new features such as these items are available with, let's say, two hours from your current locations, which is, of course, a tremendous improvement to this application. Uh, and in order to achieve this, the fascinating thing is that there is no real need to, to change your existing data sources, uh, but you will need to add a graph database layer to be able to query these relationships within the data. And also, you need to query this data in real time because we're talking about locations and, uh, and, and the only thing that matters is actually the current shopping sessions. So real-time performance is absolute key when it comes uh, to these kind of projects. And for this, you will need a graph database uh, like Neo4j. So to sum up, uh, the main reasons why companies uh, use uh, Neo4j or the reason for adopting Neo4j is that more and more companies realize that data relationships are extremely powerful. Graphs are very intuitive to understand and to model. Uh, it's surprisingly easy to implement. Uh, and from a technical point of view, Neo, Neo4j solves these kind of complex problems up to a thousand times faster than a relational, relational uh, database management system would. Uh, and with the flexibility that comes with the graph database, you would provide your systems and applications with a dynamic structure for, for future uh, user experience development or innovations, et cetera. And all of this, of course, have significant impact on results. Um, so now that Near for j is uh, it, it's uh, it's been under it's been constantly developing for the the past ten years and now we really feel that we have a proven low risk solutions then we also see that in terms of our adoption by industry leaders in basic not only retail but in software financial services media social networks and so on so that's basically it for this uh, seminar. Uh, this is all I wanted to share with you. But I also want to give a uh, shout out for our website, neo4j.com, where you will find a lot of valuable resources if you want to learn more. There's great material for developers who wants to learn more about Cypher queries and architects who wants to more information regarding the products and how it would, how it would fit uh, within your existing um, architecture. Or if you just want to learn more about our use cases, please visit Neo4j.com. There's a lot of valuable resources uh, for you to, uh, to check out there.